All right, now, we also want to talk about the concept of speed. The equation for speed is speed equals distance over time. Speed, and that's a box equation. Speed equals distance over time. Now, notice that speed uses distance. Velocity uses displacement. Displacement has both magnitude and direction, whereas distance has only magnitude. Velocity has magnitude and direction. So speed, then, just like distance, has magnitude only. And be very careful to make sure you realize that speed does not equal velocity. Just like displacement does not equal distance. They are two very different things. <coughs> Page 44, practice problem number six. Let's do it again. Let's go through another example problem. Page 44, practice problem number six. Yes. Um, with velocity, do you have to have to say, I mean, that direction? Velocity has both magnitude and direction, so velocity definitely has direction. Speed does not. All right, so this time, as I said, you, one of you is going to be reading and the other is going to be translating. So this time, Ezra, if you could please read, and Susan, could you please translate? So what's going to happen here is Ezra is going to read, Susan, you're going to ask him to stop and tell me to write stuff on the board, and so on and so forth. A bus traveled south along the straight path for 3.2 hours. Um, so, uh, you have south, which is the direction. We'll just write that up here for now. And then um, 3.2 hours is the um, train in time. Okay. With an average velocity of 88 kilometers per hour. Um, so the 88 kilometers per hour is velocity. Stop for 20 minutes, then travel south for 2.8 hours. Um, so well, that was still the um, direction. Okay, so I'm just going to put all directions here because every direction is south so rather than writing south every time we're just going to put back go ahead um, and the oh and the 20 minutes would also be change in time and same with the 2.8 stop for a minute because that confuses me Right, delta T is not just 3.2 hours, it's also 20 minutes, and it's also 2.8 hours. Uh, add those uh, well, we're not solving the problem yet. What we're doing right now is we're just understanding the problem. And so far, I don't understand that. Right, because if these are all equal to delta T, that means that 3.2 hours equals 2.8 hours, which is equal to 20 minutes. Does everyone agree with that? Yes. I will accept either yes or no for that one, because neither one makes sense. So what's the issue then? Um, so we, we should like divide it into like this segment. Divide it into segments, true. So what are we gonna do? Thoughts? Uh, hold up, Eric. Uh, two separate equations. Uh, I agree with you. You're getting to how we're gonna solve the problem. I'm, right now what all we're doing is setting up the problem. Right. We're gonna put them into different parts, different sections, right? So this is delta T1, the time for the first part. This is the time for the second part. This is the time for the third part. So they're all three separate times. <coughs> this makes this 88 kilometers per hour, bless you, this 88 kilometers per hour peeper to be the velocity for which part? The first part. Peeper. Oh, sorry. <coughs> for the first part. True. Susan, anything else to add so far? That's fine. Uh, with an average velocity of 75 kilometers per hour. Um, so the 75 kilometers per hour would be um, the velocity for three. And uh, oh, the 20 minutes, so velocity two would be um, zero. 
notice this important piece, which is often neglected. It says we stop for 20 minutes. Well, that's a velocity, right? A velocity of zero for part two, which is it lasts for 20 minutes. So far, we don't even know what we're looking for. So far, we're just listing what we know. We are getting to what we're looking for now. As well. um, part A, what is the average velocity for the total trip? Oh, um, the average Nope, we're still just writing stuff down. What do I write down? Um, so the velocity would be, well, yes, you should break it down. Again, you're getting to how we're solving. We're not solving yet. OK. What so do I write down? You would break down. We could use what I did before as a model. OK. Um. That's OK. She doesn't see it. Help her out. What am I going to write down here, Eric? So V equals question mark. I'm going to put T for total. They're all average velocities at this point. So I'm going to put T for total because well, that's the specific velocity we're looking for. That's right. Okay. Um, part B, what is the displacement for the total trip? Oh, um, so What equals question mark, Susan? Um, delta x. Delta x. Delta x, your shot? Um, what substrate do you Total, right? There are, there are a whole bunch of different displacements, delta x, we need to specify which one we're looking for. We're looking for delta x total, the displacement total. All right, so this is one way of looking at it. I have found that for some students, looking at it this way is also very helpful, so let's write it out this way as well. For this particular problem, because it has three different parts, we're gonna make a little table, and we're gonna look at it like this. We have four, part one, part two, and part three. We know the change in time for part one was 3.2 hours. The change in time for part two was 20.0 minutes. And the change in time for part three was 2.8 hours. We know that the velocity, all of these are in kilometers per hour, so I can put that in our uh, column here. The velocity for part one was 88 kilometers per hour, and the velocity for part two was zero. The velocity for part three was 75 kilometers per hour. And that's just a good way of looking at it, right? Just to kind of organize it like that. Now, we're looking for the average velocity for the total trip, and we're looking for the displacement total. What would you like to do next, Brent? Right? Brad's kind of stuck. Okay. So if you're ever stuck, just visualize this in your brain. Ready? You remember this? You've seen this before, right? You want to take every step. You don't want to call Oscar. Every step. What's a good next step? Always helpful. Tina. Uh, we'll get there. We're definitely going to have to convert 20 minutes to hours. That's not what I'm getting at yet. That's, that's going to be a little ways down here. David? Write down the equation for what we're looking for, okay? What we're looking for here is the total velocity. Well, okay, velocity. Let's just start with that equation. Velocity equals delta x over delta t. Okay, that seems useful. What now? It's open. What now? What are we going to do? Your shot. So, um, calculate the d1 and the other, not um, Oh, yeah. So, you substitute in like p1 and then t1. For what? Um, to find out delta x. Notice, we have, if you look at this equation, we have velocity and change in time for all three parts. But we do not have the displacement 
for any of those parts. So clearly figuring out the displacement for each of those parts would be a useful thing to do. So what I would suggest is that we start by rearranging this equation to solve for displacement, the thing we do not know. How are we going to rearrange this equation to solve for displacement, the thing we do not know? Remember, we're solving for delta x. Try again. We're solving for delta x. That's okay, Megan. Um, you would multiply the velocity and the change in time for each part to determine the displacement. Okay, but no, you're you've given me the solution I'm looking for. How do we get to this, Spencer? If we take this equation, we multiply both sides by delta t. Delta t cancels out on the right hand side, and we get delta t. Oops. Delta t, the change in time, multiplied by the velocity is equal to the displacement. So now, yes, Christian. Um, for like when you when you do that, would you require us to do that like on a quiz, or could we just like, or would that be just to rephrase? Your question is, am I requiring that you show all your work? No, that, that's okay. I mean, I understand that. I, to a certain extent, I make sure to show every single minuscule moment for everybody because there are people who don't quite get every second. But yeah, you can probably go from there to there. That's big oh, okay. So uh, here we go. So we have delta x. So that's just a general equation. So we could do delta x for part one is equal to the change in time for part one times the velocity for part one. The change in time for part one was 3.2 hours multiplied by the velocity for part one, which was 88 kilometers per hour. So the displacement for part one is equal to, what do we get? Ginny? multiplied by kilometers per hour. Therefore, I'm going to put the displacement here in kilometers. So for the first one, we have 281.6 <coughs> kilometers. And notice, I put south for all everything, so I'm not going to put south in every one of these displacements, for example. You could also do the displacement for part two is equal to the change in time for part two times the velocity for part two, which is equal to zero, or I'm sorry, which is equal to 20 minutes times zero. Therefore, it's equal to zero. Hopefully, you recognize that early on, the displacement for part two is zero, but mathematically, that's what it would look like. And we do the same thing for part three, and the displacement for part three is equal to the change in time for part three times the velocity for part three, which is equal to 2.8 multiplied by 75. The displacement for part three is equal to what? Two hundred ten kilometers. So we have two hundred ten kilometers. Great. I don't know why we did that though. We figured out the displacement for each individual part. Why did we do that, Ben? Because you're trying to find the average of the total trip. So. So what do we need? We need the total displacement. Coming back to the equation, what we're trying to find, right? This is going to be the displacement total divided by the time total. So we need the displacement total. The displacement total, delta x total, is going to be the displacement for part one plus the displacement for part two plus the displacement for part three, or 281.6 plus 0 plus 210, or 491.6 kilometers. This is exciting. Why? Why? What did we just figure out? We just figured out something. Arjun. We figured out the answer for part B. Notice, we're trying to solve for part A, but in part A is the answer for part B, the displacement total. So what is, James, the displacement total? What's the answer? One. 
one hand. Mike. Sig figs. How many sig figs class on this answer? No, no, how many on this answer? Four. How many there should there be? Two. Going back to the givens, 3.2, 88, et cetera, these all have two. 20 minutes does have three, but we go with the least. So when we give our answer, we need to give our answer with the correct number of sig figs. So it is 490 kilometers south. Good. We're getting close. We have the average velocity, which is the uh, displacement total divided by the time. Let's put the total change of time. We have figured out the total displacement. Our goal is to figure out the total time. What do we need to do next? Tina, you alluded to it earlier. In order to add all three of these together, we need to convert 20 minutes. So delta T2, which is equal to 20.0 minutes, we need to convert that to hours. And before you simply look at me and say, well, it's one third of an hour, I will look at you and say, I'm not going to give you a problem on a quiz or final exam that is 20 minutes. I'll give you instead 18.7 minutes. Right? Because you have to be able to do these conversions. I'm not going to give you one where you could just simply say, man, it's that one third. So how do we do this conversion, please? Okay, sure. Great, because there are 60 minutes in one hour, minutes cancel out, and lo and behold, we do get one third of an hour. Therefore, we can figure out the change in time total, which is equal to the change in time one plus the change in time two plus the change in time three, which equals 3.2 hours plus one third of an hour plus 2.8 hours, and yes, six and one third hours is the total time. So we can come back to for part A, the velocity total, which is equal to displacement total over the change in time total. We get 491.6 kilometers divided by six and one third hours. The velocity total. <coughs> comes up, so I will ask it. Mr. Palmer, why can't we just do this? Velocity total equals velocity for the first part plus the velocity for the second part plus the velocity for the third part divided by three. Why couldn't we have done that? Under what circumstances could we have done that? What is necessary to cause that to happen? RJ? Um, each velocity would like, have to be going the only time that this works is if all of the velocities were, if we were undergoing the same velo those velocities for the same amount of time. So this only works if delta t1 equals delta t2, which equals delta t3. Otherwise, which is going to be the majority of the time, you have to actually go through and figure out your displacement total and your time total. And 